Good morning, grade nines. Today we're going to talk about inequalities. Now, inequalities are different than equations because an equation only has one answer, whereas inequalities can have a range of answers. So if you take a look at the sign I've got here, it's a parking sign and it says 30 minutes, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. So the question we have is, what does this sign mean? Does it mean you can park for only 30 minutes? Does it mean you can park for a minimum of 30 minutes and you have to be, you know, you can't go below that? Or does it mean you can park from zero to 30 minutes? Well, if you've taken your driving test, you know that this means that you can park from 9 to 6 p.m. only and you're restricted to a time limit of 30 minutes, which means you can't park beyond it. So that 30 minutes is your um, top amount of time that you can park. Can you park for less than 30 minutes? Yes, you can. You can park for any amount as long as it doesn't go over the 30. Can you park for more than 30 minutes legally? No, you can't. Because the moment you go over 30, you're now breaking the, the law, uh, what the sign is saying. So, no, you're not allowed to. And if you're in parking for longer, the ticket man can come by, the policeman or the uh, parking lot attendant, and he can, he can give you a ticket. So, what we need to be able to do is talk about um, what how do you write down time being uh, greater than, than zero or time being less than 30? And how do you include numbers, not include numbers? So we're going to start with the greater than sign to show that you can park for more than zero minutes. So using t as a variable for time, I take and I write in here what's called the greater than sign. This means that whatever number this is, it must be greater than the zero. Now, you were probably taught either the Pac-Man eats the bigger number or the alligator eats the bigger number. Whatever way you want to think about it, that's fine. But the bigger number is always on the wide open area, the wide open side. So T has to be greater than zero. Right? You can read it this way or you can read it back this way. You can go zero has to be less than T. The variable does not always end up on the left side. So the sign here... It looks like that. It's called a greater than sign because we normally read from left to right. And it means greater than but not equal to. So as this is written here, you cannot include zero. And since we're talking about parking, that makes sense because you can't park for zero seconds because you would never stop. Right? Now, if you wanted to include the zero, now remember this is not what the sign is saying, but if you wanted to include the zero, you have to put a line underneath it. And as I told you before, extra ink here means that this is going to include the actual, the, the zero here, right? It's going to include this zero. So if you want to include the zero, you place a line under the sign. The line under the greater than sign means that zero has to be included in the range that you're working for. How would you use less than to show for 30 minutes? Well, we can show less than 30 minutes if we just use the less than sign that would basically just look like this. All right. However, we can park for 30 minutes. It's allowable. So we have to include the 30 here, and that's what that line under there means. So the sign greater than, sorry, less than or equal to means that the range allowed has to be 30 minutes or less. The 30 in this case has to be included. These here are called inequalities. Now, they show a range for a value rather than a discrete value like we do with equations. So let's see if you can figure out some on your own here. Define a variable and write an inequality for the following situation. Bob can jump 1.4 meters in the high jump. Now we're going to use B, so I want you to pause the recording and I want you to write the inequality that shows what Bob can jump. Okay, to start with we have B. So you should be writing down the B first, right? And then we have 1.4. And can Bob jump more than 1.4? Well, that would mean it'd have to look like, like this, right? Well, Bob can't jump, one point, can't jump more than 1.4, so that can't be there. So we now have to put it like that. This means that Bob can j jump one, less than 1.4. But it does say here that Bob can jump the 1.4. So that means you have to include it. So your inequality should look like this. Bob can jump 1.4 meters and less, less than or equal to 1.4. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Define a variable and write an inequality to model the following situation. The following sign is on a pasture. Do not enter this pasture unless you can run across it in 12 seconds. 
the bull can run across it in 13. What inequality is represented by the wise person entering the pasture? We're going to use the inequality T, okay? So pause the recording and see if you can come up with the inequality which shows um, the wise person going across that, uh, that particular field. Okay, so we know the key number here is 12, right? So we have 12 and we have T. The sign says that you have to run past faster, you have to run it in 12 seconds, right? Because the bull can run it in 13. Right? So they've, they've kind of restricted us here. Um, technically, I suppose you could outrun the bull if you could go 12, you could cross it in 12.9 seconds. I just hope that you can jump the fence in 0.1 of a second, right? So anyway, let's go on and assume that 12 is our restriction here. All right, so you take a look. Time and 12 are the first things you put down. Now, time has to be less than 12. So that's what this less than sign right here means. Now, the question is, you got your T here and you got your 12 over here. Do you include the 12? Well, if you go back to the, the actual question back here, it says, do not enter this pasture unless you can run across it in 12 seconds. So if you can do it in 12 seconds, you're okay. So what it really means here is that you have to include the 12. So our inequality, T, you have to be able to run it in time of less than or equal to 12 seconds. Now, what inequality is represented by the time for the bull? Okay. Now, the variable for the bull is B, right? And the B, and we have the number 13, right? So the question now is, how fast can the bull cross it, right? Well, the bull can do it in, can, can the bull do it in less than 13 seconds? No, they're restricted. They can't do that. So what that means is the bull can, can take longer than 13 second, minutes, sorry, and it can also include the 13 Seconds, I guess. I'm saying seconds there. I see minutes or seconds back here. Yeah, seconds. So the bull can go across it in less than or equal to 13. Now, the way this statement is said, the, paw, the, the bull can run it in 13 seconds. So basically, the bull's time is 13. But you know that the bull actually could take longer if he's not putting out 100%. Right. So the way the question is worded, the bull crosses it in 13 seconds. So there's your t equals 13. So it's not really even an inequality. However, I want you to consider this equality inequality here, because the bull could cross it in 13.2 seconds. That's possible. Right. The only restriction is it can't get less. So 12.9 for the bull, that's not allowed. It can't go that fast. So the bull is greater than or equal to 13 seconds in his crossing time. Though the way the word is, pro is, is written, it says t equals 13 here because it said the bull can cross it in 13 seconds. All right, here's our next problem. You cannot get into a ride at the circus unless you are greater than 1.3 meters tall. I want you to use h as your variable, and I'd like you to create the inequality for this, so pause the recording and do that now. All right, so... First things first, we have to have h. There's h. That's our height. And we have to have 1.3 meters. Now you have to ask yourself, what does this say here? You cannot get on the ride unless you are greater than 1.3. So the h has to be greater. Now, can you get in if you're 1.3? But if you look here, it says you are greater than 1.3. So no, we do not include the 1.3 in this case. It's not allowed. If you're 1.3, you can't get on. Bob is 14 years old, right? And I want you, so he's at least 14 years old. We use the variable A to represent Bob's age, and I would like you to create the inequality. So pause and do that. Okay. So we have, again, A. And we have 14. Now, it says here, Bob is at least 14. So Bob has to be less than 14, all right? Nope, sorry, other way around. It says he's at least 14, which means he could be 14. Let's click like that. So Bob is greater than 14. Now the question is, do you actually inclu include it? And yes, you do, because he could be at least 14. Now the first time I did it, I went like this. A is less than 14. And this would be Bob is at most 14. So that's why I got tricked there for quite a second. So 
what you have here is A has to be greater than or equal to 14 because 14 has to be included. Okay, Bob has less than 145 comic books in his comic book collection. C is the number of comic books. Please stop the video, or sorry, pause the video and create this inequality. Okay, so it says here he has 145, so our first number is going to be uh, 145. And we have C. It says Bob has less than, so we know it's got to be like this, less than 145. So does he have 145 comic books? No, he doesn't because he can't have, he has less than this. So we do not put the number underneath here. That's, that's not put in there. So this is what your inequality should look like. C has to be less than 145 comic books. Okay, so now we have to graph them. Now, when you graph them, we have a graph of range. So I'm going to go through the first one with you just to help you out. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to create the inequality for Brandy's dog, and then we're going to graph it so you can see what it looks like. All right? Now, it says here, Brandy's dog is at least two years old. So we've got Brandy's dog, D, and two years old. The question now is, he's at least two years old. At least means he's got to be, oops, sorry, he's got to be greater than two years old. All right? So he's at least two. You have to include it. So D, his age, is greater than two, but he's at least two years old. So that's our inequality right there. I guess I used B for Brandy's dog. Now, to graph this, um, it's very straightforward. All you have to do is take and look at the number you're given, and that's 2. So we're working with the number 2. That's over here. He's at least 2 years old. And what we're going to do, because it's a little bit difficult to do this without having a whole bunch of highlighters and stuff like that, is we're going to be using a circle. All right? Now that circle is going to be around the number that you're using, the 2. Now it says here B is greater than or equal to 2. All right, so we want to include this too. To do that, what we do is we fill it in. All right? And what I tell everybody is this. You see the little extra ink underneath there? That little extra ink line? That means extra ink in here. All right? Now, it has to be greater than 2. So if you pop up, you have a choice of which way to go. All right? Is it going to be going to the left? Or is it going to go to the right? Well, if you think about it, he is at least two, and it's greater, so it's got to go that way. So this is your graph. If I was marking this, um, I would be marking like that, and your arrow. So did you fill it in, and did you put the arrow the correct direction? Right. So this is what it would look like. Again, remember, it, you do include the number. You have to put the, the circle has to be filled in. Now, the two, the closed circle on the two means that the two has to be included in the range of acceptable values. If we did not want to include the two, we would use an open circle, and it would look um, like this. So say, say it would look like that. That means we don't include negative one there. So if I want not to include that, it would be I can't. I don't know if I can make it work, but it would be like that, and you wouldn't fill it in. All right. So what are four possible answers for this? Well, you take a look at the positive two and everything greater than that, and including the two. When it asks you for four possible solutions, I want you to take and choose four answers which make sense. Right? You can't tell me that the dog is 250 years old because that's not making sense. Choose numbers which are reasonable. So we know he can be two, he could be three, he could be four, and of course anything greater than four is, sorry, two or greater is good. You could have a decimal or you could have a fraction. All work. Okay. Bob is two years old. His sister Jan is older than him. Define a variable and write an inequality which shows Jan's age. So Jan is being compared to two years old. So there's Jan. And that's his brother. Now it says here Jan's sister is older than him. That means that this has got to be more than the two, right? Now, the question asked is, do you include the two, right? Well, it says here that she's older. If you did not say she's at least or whatever, it's just older. So that means that in this case, Jan is going to be greater than two. Now, to graph this inequality, this is what we're going to be doing here. You go to the two, and since we don't include it, no extra ink there, no extra ink inside. This is an open circle. 
Now Jan has got to be greater than 2. So you're going to pop up and you're going to go this way. She's going to be everything greater than 2. Why is the circle not filled in? Well, it says, it says that uh, you don't include the, the actual two years old. It shows, this shows that Jan cannot be the same age as Bob. She has to be older. If she and Bob were twins, she was born first. Otherwise, she could be years older than Bob. What are four possible solutions? Well, starting with this, you're going to think, get any answer which is greater than two. But you cannot have two. It's not allowed. All right? So you could have 2.1, 3, 4, 5.5, whatever you wish. But it all has to be greater than two. All right, now we're just going to go straight to graphing. So I want you to graph this. You, uh, I think you have on yours the, uh, the timeline. I need you to take and put the number 5 in, the proper timeline. So it should look somewhere like this. There's 5, 4, 3, 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. Always put the number that you're working with somewhere in the middle. And then put the other numbers correct in order of a timeline. All right? Remember, negatives don't look like this. If it was negative, it would be negative. Negative would be over here and it would be 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So t has to be greater than 5. So I'm going to go to 5 here. And it's going to be greater, but it can't be 5. So no extra ink there, which means it's going to be an open circle. Now the open circle is like that, but it's greater, so it's going to pop up and go that direction. Okay, I want you to try this one here. x is less than 7. So pause the recording and graph that one. Okay, this is my number setup. I put 7 over here. I've got 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm counting by 1s. And x has to be less than 7. It's, because there's no ink underneath that, that means that 7 is not included. All right? So it's going to be an open circle on 7, and then everything less. Away it goes. All right, pause the recording and now do this one. And I'll give you a little bit of hint on the graphing. This is what your graphing should look like. 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. So pause the recording and do this one. All right. So do we include the 1.5? Yes. So we're going to have a closed-in circle. And uh, the x is going to be less than that, so it's going to be a closed-in circle going to the left. All right. So pause the recording and try to do this one. And again, I'll help you with the fractions. I'm going to work with thirds. All right. So there you go. All right, so first off, do you include the one-third? Extra ink down here? Yes, you do. This is greater than and equal to one-third. So this is going to pop up at one-third, and it's going to go to the right-hand side. Looking at this one here, again, pause the recording and do this one. Okay, so I've got to have negatives. Now, here's the thing about negatives. Remember to, to do your negatives as they would appear on a number line. The biggest mistake I see is people who go like this. 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Well, that doesn't make any sense because negatives don't increase to the right. They actually, they would decrease, right? It would be like going down as, you know, as you go to the right. So don't do that. So what does it look like? B is greater, sorry, is less than negative 3, so I'm going to go to negative 3. There's no extra ink, so it's going to be an open circle. And it's going to pop up and be less, so it's going to go to the left-hand side. Okay? Now, negative 2 and 3 fifths. I'd like you to pause the recording and do this one. Okay, now the numbering on this number line is pretty, is, is, is kind of tricky, right? I have fifths here, so there's negative 2 and 1 fifth, negative 2 and two-fifths, negative two and three-fifths, negative two and four-fifths. So this is the number I'm working with, right? And as I go this way, I'm going to be increasing or decreasing by fifth each time. So this becomes negative one and four-fifths, negative one and three-fifths, negative two, one, sorry, ne negative one and two-fifths, etc. Now, x is greater than negative two, so I know it's going to be going this direction to the right. And since there's an op uh, a little bit of extra ink there, you do include, include the negative 2 and 3 fifths. So it's going to be a closed-in circle popping up and going to the right. Okay. Now, when you're doing graphing, I'm just going to stop here for a second. Um, if you notice something, there's an awful lot of extra numbers wasted here, isn't there? All right. What you need to do only is to include the number you're working with, and you really only need to have this. Right, the number before it, the number after it, and the number. That's all you really need for graphing. There's no need to put all this stuff down. It looks pretty, and I had the number line already set up, so putting it in doesn't really matter, but it's also a lot of extra work. 
So try to just put in the number, the previous one and the next one, and then pop it up and go whichever way you wish and make sure you fill in the circle accordingly. Okay, now let's go back, backwards. I want you to take a look at this and I want you to write the inequality for this. Now the inequality can be any, so the variable can be any one you wish. So pause the recording and create an inequality for this. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is I need to have a, a variable. And I'm just going to use, I'm going to use x, okay? Now, uh, the, the number I'm working with is the negative 2. Now, is it greater than negative 2? Yep, it's getting greater than negative 2. Do I include negative 2? Well, you see here, this is not filled in. So that means no, I don't. So this here, x is greater than negative 2. That is your inequality. All right. Pause the recording and try both of these, please. All right. Again, starting out with x, and I have negative 1. Now, it's going to be going to the right, which means it's going to be getting greater. So x is more than negative 1. It's filled in, so you must have a line there. So this is your answer. Sorry, that should be a negative 1. I forgot my negative right there. All right. All right. So next, I have to go down here. All right, I've got uh, over here, it's a positive 3. So I have my x and I have 3. Now, everything below 3 is being included, so I have to be less than 3 this time. Do I include the 3? No, because it's not filled in. So that means that my equality, in, uh, sorry, my inequality is going to be x is less than 3. Okay, the last one, pause the recording and, and do this one. Okay, so again, I'm working with x and positive 3. All right. Now, this one here goes less than, so it's just still the same way here. But look at the difference here. That one was an open circle, so there was nothing down here. But this is a closed circle, so that means you have to include the 3 this time. So this time, x is less than or equal to 3. Okay, time for assignment. So if you have any questions, let me know. Come in and see me. You can watch the video again, and uh, we'll see you in the next lesson.